Giles, I have a poem, a very, very short poem for you, which was uh, one of the winners selected for uh, National Poetry Day a couple of years ago. Well, it's basically the definition of one very, very popular dialect word, and I want you to guess which one it is, if you possibly can, OK? Uh, I'm ready. You know, face like thunder, eyes rolling like rain clouds, turn the whole room grey when you walk in type thing. That missed your bus, hole in your shoe, favourite pub's been turned into a coffee shop, kind of sorrow, rage, moodiness that sludges out the corners of your mouth. Can you guess? No idea whatsoever. I'm not good on dialect. OK, well, it was written by Toby Campion. I think it's absolutely brilliant. And it's a poem about the word Mardi. 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 Do you remember I've... Arctic Monkeys, Mardi Bum? I sort of do know Mardi Bum. OK. I'm more familiar with Mardi Gras. Which <laughs> a different is... kind of... That, that's the I. That means Tuesday. That this means one Tuesday, means, doesn't it? Well, it's so hard to define Mardi because it encapsulates all those wonderful emotions that Toby um, presents there. But it basically means a sort of irritable, peevish, sulky... Well. Everything that Toby describes, that is being Mardi, and I absolutely love it. And it originally was from Yorkshire, and it has um, spread pretty much nationally now, but it's one of my favourite dialect words. Well, and that's what we're talking about today. Good. What are we? We are Something Rhymes With Purple. So this is um, the podcast, the fairly new podcast, uh, with me, Susie Dent, and Giles Brandreth. And something does rhyme with purple. It's the word herple. Yes. I used to think that nothing rhymed with purple or silver or orange and I don't think anything really does rhyme with silver or orange properly but herple does rhyme with purple and herple is what? It means to walk with difficulty. To walk with difficulty. But I have to say our wonderful podcast listeners and we have fairly loyal following so thank you so much um, for listening to us and uh, and for tweeting in because a couple of people who tweeted in words that I had no idea existed. One of them is the equestrian term kerple uh, which rhymes clearly with purple and um, I think I'm going to look it up quickly in my trusty Oxford English dictionary but it's i think it's part of a horse's harness um oh actually no it's the rump or posterior of a horse according to this so there you go more than one thing does rhyme with purple so i'm learning all the time so a purple and a herple rhyme yes. with purple yes and we are here today talking about dialects what in a nutshell is a dialect uh, well, gosh, that's such a, a big question because dialect doesn't necessarily mean uh, a regional vocabulary. Um, you might have a dialect online, for example. So people who um, like to speak doggo. Have you heard of doggo? It's the new language with which we speak to dogs, apparently. This is a whole new podcast. As in a whole other episode. Yes, that is a dialect in itself. But traditionally, a dialect is uh, encompasses local vocabulary and local pronunciation. So do we all speak in a dialect? Is there a dialect? I mean, when I was brought up, my, it's not to do with accent. Is it to do with accent or is it well, to do with vocabulary? Well, most people think of dialect as purely pronunciation, but it's vocabulary too. So, for example, uh, well, actually, I was going to ask you what you call being cold, but instead I am going to uh, do a short quiz on you. Now, this was in the New York Times. It was absolutely fantastic. Um, a lot of people sent this to me. It was basically called, I think, the Anglo, the British-Irish dialect quiz and uh, essentially it says what does the way you speak say about where you're from so it gives us lots of different questions and then it will try and locate on a map this is the new york times Very good. um it'll tell you or try to locate where you're from so are you ready i'm ready okay so how do you pronounce s-c-o-n-e what are the big questions s-c-o-n-e scone me too OK. I won't have this scone business. We'll discuss it later. But scone <laughs> is... And also, I'm afraid, it's essential to put the cream on first and then the jam. I know Dawn French, who listens to our podcast, has a different view about mm, this. Well, it depends if you're from Devon or Cornwall. I know. But basically, Jam it's... first if you're in Cornwall. I, I know that. Yes. I know okay. that. Um, that's the way they do it down there. We do not approve or agree. It's, I do. No, well, don't look at me. It's scone. I always put my jam first. It's scone. Even though my dad's from Devon. Right. OK, which of these words, if any, would you use for a young person characterised by loutish behaviour and low social status? Yob. Yob, OK. Is that there? Yeah. Oh, good. What were the alternatives? Oh, chav, scally, stig, ned, scumbag. Oh, please. Uh, what do you call the small grey bug that curls up into a ball when it's touched? The small grey... Oh, I keep away from that sort of creature. Small grey bug. I don't it know. It curls up into a ball when it's touched. 
Uh, a porcupine. A it's got spines on it, is it? No, it's like tiny, tiny little thing that might creep into your house so quick, and often goes onto its back and its legs go. <laughs> okay, is it a wood louse? Is it a fat pig? A hairy molly? A roly poly? A cheese log? Granny grey? Chucky pig? Cheesy bug? Etc. I avoid all of those. I don't think there's any words that have crossed okay, my vocabulary. I'm going to put down. This is the f- the only person I know that would say, I don't know what that is. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I honestly don't know what it is. What how, kind of a life do you think I lead? How do you pronounce I the... live in a lovely, clean home. <laughs> how do you pronounce the A in L-A-S-T? Last. Okay. Last. Ah, ah, last. Not last. Last. Okay. I'm, I'm racing through these because I lost them. But people, people, I hope, are taking part. I hope, if you're listening to this, you too are taking part and you may not sound like I sound, so you may come from a different part of the world. Uh, what word would you use for a child's soft shoes worn for P.E.? Gym shoes. Oh, interesting. They were plimsolls for me. Different generation. Plimsolls or or trainers, obviously. Gym shoes. Okay. How do you prefer, how do you refer to your mother? Be careful. Old dear, mammy, mummy, oh, please. mummy, old lady. I called oh. my mother. I suppose either mummy or ma, ma. Okay. Ma. Ma. What word would you use for a piece of long cushioned furniture in the main room of a house? Long cushioned furniture. The sofa. Yeah. Yeah, what is the alternative? That's sort of going to be you and non-you English, isn't it? Where you get satire. I know it is a bit so actually. That's anyway, a bit go on. Classist. How do you refer to your grandmother? Granny. Yeah. Very similar to mine. Some of these. Which Though of people the... often come up to me and say, "Oh, my nan loves you." They very rarely come up and say, "I love you." <laughs> I Sometimes they say, "My mum loves you," but it's usually, "My nan loves you." <laughs> uh, which word would you use for someone you think is stupid? Look at me, and you can tell me. Stupid dunce. Fool. Okay. Dunce. What are the options? Mm, fool's are the not on there, actually. Pillock. <laughs> Pillock. Not... I love that. That was mine. Pillock. Numpty. Numpty. Wazzock. Numpty's quite fun. I like... Blank. Idiot. I, I quite like Numpty. Burke is... I wouldn't use Burke because I know it's rhyming, rhyming slang. slang and for something Berkeley very rude. Um, Barkley. Barkley. Sorry, Barkley. But then, then it wouldn't be Bark. And then it would be Bark, not Burke, wouldn't it? Yeah, of course. The... Which one? Numpty? Numpty. I like Numpty, Numpty. but I wouldn't really use it. Oh, what would you a... use? I Pillock? Wouldn't... I wouldn't use pillow, certainly. Numpty, I'll give a numpty. Idiot. Oh, you're an idiot. What word would you use for a heavy rainfall? So would you say it's bucketing down, it's chucking it down, it's bucketing. lashing, tipping, pissing, pelting. Oh, I certainly wouldn't use pissing. <laughs> what would you say, bucketing? What kind of person do you think I am, <laughs> Susie Dent? <laughs> Different to me. Bucketing? Bucketing. What do you call it when, when a person gets a ride on the back of someone else's bike? A freebie. <laughs> oh, I don't know, you say a croggy. I've never heard of that. Have a croggy? Not? Yeah. Do you know we lead very different lives? It's interesting, isn't it? We do. I haven't done that for a while, though. How do we print the, the riding pillion? Uh, what word would you use for playing truant? Skiving. Yep. Right. Let's see if it's got you right. And I want to see if it's got you right as well. And then the listeners... It have... did have me right. Good. And people can get this themselves by going to Google and looking up New York, New York Times. New York Times.com, yes. Dialect um, quiz. Well, look, I'll show you. It's, it's, it's south... Oh, there's a map. Some of it's far south. It's it, a... it kind of got me. It got Paul, our uh, producer, spot on because he's from Derry. You see, what is interesting is I don't think it gets me particularly at all. Ah. Um, well, it gets, I suppose, my my where I was brought up as a young person, but it doesn't really get my family background because I think the way I sound is very typical middle class. Yeah, it is. It's I don't think, disentangle, I don't think it? I am regional so much as... But it's given you South and South East. It's given me South and South East, which yeah. I suppose is what is middle, middle class. But in yeah. fact, my, my grandfather, my grandparents came from the North West, oh. from, from Liverpool. My mother's family came from Lancashire, around I Manchester. think what it shows is that you grew up with RP, received pronunciation. I did. And yes. interestingly, when I was a boy, it wasn't called... Received pronunciation, RP, is now... It used to be something that actors would go to drama school and they'd be taught received pronunciation so that you could, you know, if you were hoping to play an Aquary in The Crown, you could do RP. Now, it's no longer compulsory at drama schools like RADA or Central to do RP. We, we celebrate whatever voice you come with. I think, technically, you ought to be told to do received pronunciation. If you listen to people... Uh, television stars, film stars of the 1940s and 1950s, they all have rather pinched, actually rather more like that voices, rather more strangulated. They talked even more like that. You know, the Queen, when she was young, talked much more like this. See, the Queen's an interesting one because, like everything, um, words 
follow fashion. And uh, I mean, I've spoken to a lot of uh, DJs who, when they started, if they were from the black country, for example, as Adrian Charles is, uh, would be, is, um, they had it drummed out of them in order to be able to speak RP. Uh, but now, if you have a regional accent, I think it's an advantage and, and that's wonderful. So we're embracing regional accents like nothing before. So Geordie is the coolest, coolest brand on the phonetic map, really. Everyone wants, wants to speak like a Geordie. I love it. But there are some that are mocked still. So the Birmingham accent, I think, uh, Birmingham. Is still, yeah. It is still right. It's from Birmingham. I can do it. But I love it. I don't, don't ask me to try because I, I absolutely can't. But... Um, obviously, they're steeped in history, but the one good thing I would say is that people think that our uh, regional vocabulary and um, not so much our accents, because I think we retain those, but our regional vocabulary is dying out and that we're all beginning to speak this bland, monolithic language. But actually, the BBC did a fantastic project a few years ago called The Voices Project, and it showed that we are still speaking regionally. And so when we go home, you know, we might say that we're cold to our friends at work. But when we go home, it's like putting on a sort of woolly baggy jumper. It's your old huffle buff, the old comfy clothes. And then you will start talking in your sort of regional dialect. So you might say you're shrammed or you're nithered um, or you're parky or it's brassic or whatever. Actually, brassic is broke, isn't it? Um, but that's when you start talking locally. The advantage of the local talk is that it's it's rich and it's interesting and it tells people maybe where you come from. The disadvantage is that it can be a little bit excluding of others. Yes, I, I remember tribal. When, yeah. I, when I was a, a member of parliament, I was a member of parliament for the city of Chester, which is in the northwest of England in Cheshire, not far from Liverpool where my family come from, strong Liverpool accents. But actually in Chester, you could be in the home counties. They speak with a kind of neutral received pronunciation. And a bank... The uh, MBNA, a bank from America, came and wanted to have a call centre in the northwest of England. And uh, there were two possibilities. One was to go into North Wales or to come two miles away to Chester. And Chester won, even though they were offering subsidies, the Welsh people were offering subsidies to get the company to go to Wales, only two miles apart, they went to Chester because the local people spoke with this neutral... Hmm. accent that didn't send out any signals. And it was a call centre for people getting in touch from throughout the British Isles. Mm. And they wanted a neutral voice. And they thought, well, if we have a North Wales voice... See, I love it when I call someone and they've got a strong accent. I could listen to the... I know this is not the most popular, but I could listen to the Northern Irish accent as I could the Dublin accent. I love a Northern Irish accent. People, I'm told, the research suggests that people trust a Scottish accent most of all, Mm. which is why often on commercial voiceovers they do have a Scottish accent for for banks and things. So the Scottish accent is to to the benefit. Mm. So... A dialect is... Is a dialect an accent? No, it's a vocabulary. It's both. It's it's both. A dialect encompasses both vocabulary and pronunciation. And um, famously... Uh, I, I mean, there are certain tests that dialectologists or dialecticians will pose to ascertain where people are from, but also to map how quickly a dialect's change. So you can go 30 miles. Within 30 miles, you will find that the word, for example, for a bread roll changes. Is it a bap? Is it a stotty? Is it a cob? Uh, what do you call a bread roll? A bread roll. Oh. I'll have one of those bread rolls. <laughs> like, good, good man. OK. Um, well, I, I'd feel ridiculous going in and saying I'll have a cob. They might send me a horse. <laughs> a snotty? Um, a stotty, not oh, a snotty. Stotty. stotty you would find if you were, if you go to Newcastle, you will get a stotty. You will get fish fingers in a stotty is the best thing ever. Um so that's one of the key things. But you know, there are there are people who are so that their ears are so receptive and so highly attuned to accents that they will be able to tell you which side of a of a high street in Leeds, say someone was born. That's how good their ear has become. I would absolutely kill to do that. Um, but also, very interestingly, animals apparently have accents too. So ducks have been shown. There was a, a, an experiment done to see um, how ducks in Somerset quacked and whether their quack was different to ducks from the north and indeed they were they had a sort of west country burr can you believe that um and this has been proved over and over again that somehow animals are sort of picking up the sounds that are around them and develop an accent of their own is i love that is cockney a dialect it's a tribal language which is located in a particular area so the original cockney yes is sound of bow bells and all that would have been because i mean i always used to think it dated from around the 1840s and it sort of originated in the east end of Yes, it originated amongst costermongers who um, wanted to 
you know, talk the talk and not be understood by other people. They might have been up to no good. They might have been sort of, um, you know, selling things that fell off the back of a lorry. And so they developed this kind of banter. So it was it was tribal, it was unifying, but it was also quite I, useful because it evaded the authority. I mean, for a bubble bath, <laughs> for a laugh. Let's do my very quick Cockney rhyming slang quiz. Ascot races. Uh, something faces. Braces. Oh, yeah. Cool. Battle cruiser. Bruiser. Boozer. Oh, duh. This is quite difficult. Boracic. Boracic lint skint. Very good. Boracic lint skint. Uh, Brahms and list. Pissed. Very good. Laugh and joke. Mm, no idea. Smoke. Oh, I'll cool. go for a laugh and joke. Um, oh, raspberry tart. Farts. That's where blowing a raspberry comes from. Oh, does it? Yes. Oh, I Blowing did... a raspberry tart fart. Yes. I didn't know that because I thought a raspberry was a... It is. Done with the lips. It sounds like a fart. I didn't know that. Yes. Oh, can I teach you something, incidentally, because we'd like to go down... Don't teach me how to blow a raspberry. Yeah, well, now I'll teach you how to do good lip wobbles because people don't do good lip wobbles. I've noticed this. Um, I have huge lips as well, so... All right, I go got... My it. lips are disappearing as the years are going by. <laughs> Yours are growing and mine are disappearing. OK. You need to be able to wobble your lips for you to be able to speak in a relaxed way. And people Can you like... do this in a dialect, in a regional way? Well, I don't know. If are ducks, we going completely ducks... off-piste, we off can go on, list? We can go off for a moment. <laughs> if, um, if ducks can speak in different accents, I just wanted to share this with you, because this is an incidental. People need something to take home from the podcast, and this is what they're taking home today. People need to get their lips moving at the beginning of the day. I, I'm refusing to do this. You're refusing to do it. OK. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm just sharing this with the listeners, and if it survives the edit... It survives the edit. If it doesn't, it doesn't. <laughs> this is for good, playing a good raspberry. Press your forefingers against the edge of your mouth, about a centimetre away from the edge of your mouth, and you can sustain that uh, lip wobble for almost ever. <laughs> oh, it isn't quite working. <laughs> Get the idea? What I find fascinating when I like I said, um, do quite a, a bit of travelling around to collect local words for a book I did a while ago, and uh, it's that we're pretty pessimistic. Well, I, I suppose it's well known that the British are pessimistic, but the subjects that we love to collect local words in are really sort of quite unpleasant, I suppose. So there were loads for blisters, for example, whether you call them a bleb or um, or a blob. Or a blip. In fact, they're all very an uh, on matter pit. But armpit was another one. Um, Hold on, armpit. Armpit. You're oxter. You're ox. You're ox. Oxter. Actually, as a great verb to oxter someone is if they've had a sort of heavy night in the pub. If you oxter them, you you sort of carry them under your arm. You sort of help That's them. Um, okay. Um, whether you're knock kneed or pigeon toed, or I guess what it proves is that we're a fairly gossipy bunch. So, you know, talking about the weather, talking about other people's deficiencies, etc. Um, and there are so many different words for gossiping. So, I'll give you a few Jangle in Liverpool, Jaffock in Cheshire, Pross from Devon. I've never heard Jaffock. And Jaffock. I spent a lot of time that. in Cheshire. It sounds like your mouth full at the same time. Jaffock. We haven't and that, what does it mean? Bit. It's just to gossip. Oh, we had a good Jaffock. Yeah. Conjobble is another one. Conjobble. Conjobble. Oh, I love that. I know. It sounds a bit of, rude. I think it can be rude, but I think it can also mean to have a good gossip while uh, while you're eating over lunch. Or, you know, oh, we had, con a good, we had a good conjobble. Um, uh, what else? Uh, cham rag. Uh, likewise, I think it sort of come from kind of grinding or chewing the rag, which was a, a um, synonym for the tongue. A horcher mouth is uh, is a sort of blusterer, someone who just loves sounding off. I mean, so many for for gossiping. And tea drinking is another one. Tea drinking, beer drinking, so many words for that. Do you, do you put the brew on? Do you mash your tea? What do you do to your tea? I certainly don't mash. I do have not. A, See, I have that's a cup. From I suppose brewing, I might well. have a cuppa. You have a cuppa, but do you brew it? Do you steep it? Do you, What do you do? Well, actually, I don't brew it. I, I suppose I steep it. What I've taken to doing with my tea is I have it in a bag, a tea bag, and I pop it in the... Well, no, not every... Some people are still on into loose tea. in the microwave. Some no. people are into loose tea still. Yes, loose tea. Loose, no, no, I'm, I'm just uh, the appalled queen. at the microwave thing. Well, people put their... What, what do they do? What do they do? Well, they just pour hot water on a tea bag, most of us. Yes, that's what I do. Oh, Tell I thought, me about the middle of the microwave. microwave. I no, thought no, you were no, going no. to microwave. It's like, no, thank I, you. I don't put... We did, have, we did once have a Christmas by the microwave, you know. There was, we Your all... Christmas is a notorious. I used to ask what you were doing for Christmas and you just said, it's just the two of us and uh, we'll be having uh, uh, 
a salad. Because <laughs> well, you, don't, you don't do Christmas, do you? Well, of course we do Christmas. Oh, okay. We do do Christmas, but a simple Christmas because we are veggies. So Me it, too. And it can be. No, the, the year that really was a bit sad was when we decided we'd just do a microwave Christmas. Oh, yeah, maybe this is the time I'm thinking of. And we all lined up by the microwave at one o'clock. By ten past one, we'd cooked our meal <laughs> and we'd eaten it. And then there was sort of two hours to wait till the Queen came on. Oh, it was a bit tedious. Oh, we talked... Yeah, sorry, I was going but, to mention the Queen earlier. Yes. Uh, which is that if you compare her early Christmas broadcast with today's, she's gone quite estuary, as they say. So her accent has definitely, definitely changed with the times. I was mentioning that in terms of fashion. We all follow the fashion, and even so, the Queen. so has mine. If you see... Really? I, I first did a, a, my own television programme, believe it or not, 50 years ago. Christmas 1969. It was called Child of the Sixties. And I was still a student. I sat on a stool, interviewed the great and the good of the day. And fortunately, it's been wiped because they wiped a lot of programmes to reuse the tape. Mm. But if you could have heard me, because there are odd clips of me at that period, it's a complete joke. I, I make I make Jacob Brees Mogg sound like the artful dodger. I right. mean, it is so... Oh, how do you do, everybody? Lots well, of Latin phrases. Well, no, not so much of the Latin phrases, just the accent is so sort of strangulated. And But when it comes to tea, I pop my I pop a tea bag into a mug and I pour boiling water on top of it yeah. from a tap now. I've got a tap that issues boiling water. Okay. And then I leave the tea bag in. I like to see the tea bag floating in a rather sinister way. I know, way. I do the same. And a spoon. I and, think. I think. I'm not sure about the spoon because that can get in the eye. Oh, no, no, it's fine. I, yes, I'm pretty much like you, but at some point the tea bag has to come out. Now, is... Can people... I just say, yes. Victorian slang for being mother and pouring tea was known as bitching the pot. Oh, I'd like Can that. I play mothers? Can I bitch the pot? I love that. Oh, I like that. Mm. Is anyway. it a dialect if you are in Wales or in Scotland? I, I have families, you know, that come from Wales. Um, in fact, well, they're really Anglo-Welsh. Properly Anglo Welsh. My my grandparents were Anglo Welsh. My my parents were truly Anglo Welsh. They burnt down their own cottage, um, so they are really English people who spend time in Wales. But my wife's mother was born in Swansea. My wife was born in Swansea. Mm. I love the South Wales accent, the gentle South Wales accent. But there they have their own language, Welsh. Yes. Now, no, that's a language. That that's is a not language, a dialect. A yes. distinct language. Oh, yes, it's a so wonderful language. A dialect is merely a version of the standard language. Yes. So we have English dialects. So in Wales, are there, Engl- there, are there well, dialect there probably words? are Welsh dialects, I'm sure. Um, just as German has lots of dialects. Um, so, yes, dialect is, is crosses many, many languages. Um, and, and will there be a difference between what they speak in North Wales in terms of dialects? I'm sure. And what they speak I'm sure. in it's all, South Yes, Wales. it's all regional. I love time that I spend in Ireland, mm. both in the Republic of Ireland and particularly in Northern Ireland, which is one of the most beautiful parts of the United Kingdom. Yes, isn't it? I, I only discovered that recently because I'd never been and then I went to Belfast and was bowled over. Had you been before? I had never been and I just loved the vibe of it and the, and the architecture. And it brought to mind, uh, I'm, I'm sorry that this is so well known because I, I wish I had some beautiful Northern Irish... Uh, dialect word up my sleeve, but it's the obvious one. It's crack, crack, and I that means that. what does that mean? A good it's spirit, like fun, a good feeling, great amusement. And how do you spell entertainment? Crack? It's C R A I C. Crack. It's pronounced um, crack. And I think I have already said uh, in an earlier episode how famously on Countdown I love this word so much that I hit the desk with passion and said I love crack, uh, much to the amusement of everybody else. Oh, because of course there's not crack like cocaine. Yes, yeah, as not well, like- Susie. This is the moment that I really look forward to, the three new words, or rather old words, that you're going to introduce me to, to enrich my vocabulary, because it pays to increase your word power. It certainly does. Now, some of these are dialect, as you would expect. Um, In fact, all of them are going to be dialect today. Sorry, let's start again. Uh, My three have each come from a particular dialect, um, obviously. Um, And the first is not something I think any of us are really going to need, at least not very often. Perhaps seasoned walkers might like to know about a flinterkin. Be careful not to step on a flinterkin. A flinterkin? How do we spell flinterkin? Uh, F-L-I-N-T-E-R-K-I-N. That is from Orkney, and it means a dry cow pat. Oh, there's nothing more annoying than stepping in a dry cow pad. Actually, there oh, really? is. Oh, stepping you. in a, a... A wet one. A wet one. Ooh. <laughs> this okay. is why I don't go to the country. 
Oh, I love the. I, do I you really it. like the country? Yes, I do. Um, here's another gorgeous one, um, which uh, again is regional. Now it depends. It's it's mostly northern, but you might find it down south as well. And it's a glimmer gauk. A glimmer gauk. I absolutely love this word. A glimmer gauk is an owl. Oh, I love, how do you spell it? Glimmer. Uh, it's G L I M M E R. So yep. glimmer, and then a gauk, also known as a bob owler, in certain G-A-U-K. places. G A U K. Yes. All one word. Uh, yeah, I have a little hyphen in between, possibly. A glimmer gauk. Yeah, so you find it in Gloucestershire. Um, you'll find it in Lincolnshire. Um, you'll find it uh, in certain places up north. And Bob Owler as well, I love too. That was that was one of the National Poetry Day submissions too. And all of these went in the dictionary because dictionaries are really desperately trying to capture dialect uh, because so much of it is part of an oral tradition and we rely on printed sources. So we're making huge concerted efforts to capture um, new dialect Excuse and me. old dialect. Indeed. Just I know we've touched on this before, but to yeah. get into the dictionary... Do you allow something that's only spoken? It has to be written down somewhere. It does, um, but, you know, nowadays you can have transcripts of conversations, that kind of thing. So we're, we're digging deep to find the printed records and also to transcribe spoken conversations. I made a mistake, actually. A bob owler is not an owl. It's a large moth. A bob owl? A bob owler. Is that your third word? No, I'm just throwing that That's in. That's a bonus. Together with it, Your yes. bonus this week is Bob Owler, which is a moth. Yes. But our two big ones so far, the Glimmer Gork, which is an owl from Gloucestershire. What was the first one again? Uh, it was a flinterkin from Orkney. A flinterkin from Orkney, which is a hard cowpat. Yes. And I am going back to... Um, oh, I'm going to Yorkshire, actually, this time, but back to... Um, dialect into the F's and this is fobbly mobbly fobbly mobbly if you're feeling fobbly mobbly you're neither one thing or the other you're just feeling a bit uh, meh it's the it kind of dialect version of meh meh m-e-h m-e-h equals fobbly I think fobbly that's very good I've been feeling a bit fobbly mobbly recently Have actually you? I've just been a bit sort of neither well nor unwell yeah a bit mardy so so mardy mardy I love a bit mardy um, but meh fobbly mobbly I love that word. I go to Yorkshire a lot. Do you go to Yorkshire? I love Yorkshire. It's one of my favourite places because Countdown, of course, was in Leeds. That's where it started. Absolutely. Um, so, no way. You I must come it. to visit. You've never been to see my teddy bear collection, have you? <laughs> no. Well, you must. <laughs> I haven't. You, you must come. Uh, we're, we're, it's not far from York. It's not far from Ripon. It's a somewhere oh, called yeah. Newby Hall. Have you heard of Newby Hall? I have. Newby Hall is a beautiful historic house, and the grounds are terribly well kept. You will very rarely, though there are cattle there, who very rarely come across a flinterkin. <laughs> Um, if you've enjoyed listening to us today, first of all, thank you. And secondly, if you could give us a review or rate us and help spread the word, we would be hugely grateful and thankful. Something Rhymes with Purple is a Something Else production uh, produced by Paul Smith with help from Russell Finch, Steve Ackerman, Josh Gibbs and the lovely Gully. Oh, good old Gully. <laughs> you see Gully and you no longer feel fobbly-mobbly, do you? Never. <laughs>